Hi everyone, it's Ruby and welcome back to my channel. So, I know I haven't filmed in a while, but I am back for a Q&A. So, in today's video, I thought because I haven't filmed in a while because I was doing my mocks, that's the key reason. But because of that, I feel like I kind of need to, before I get back into it, do a little update with you guys on my life. I'm going to do that today. Earlier on, I put on my Instagram and I put asking some questions for you guys to ask me. Just I didn't do a specific subject. I didn't say like school, although there probably will be questions about school. I said Q&A questions for a YouTube video just because I wanted to have a wide span of questions just to kind of update you on my life. I haven't looked at them yet, but I'm going to look at them now and hopefully there is some ones that I haven't answered in a while. Yeah, without further ado, let's get started. I've done my mocks. I am focusing on GCSEs because in like 50 something days I have my GCSEs starting. So that is my priority for the next couple of months. Just to let you know, this part of the video is sponsored by Oxford Revise. So I'm doing English revision for my English language GCSE and I'm using the Oxford Revise AQA GCSE English language book, which is right here. In English revision at the moment, we have been doing past papers and I've been using this book to help me because it covers everything I've been doing in class. I just finished my mocks, which were really good practice, and now I'm working towards my actual GCSE exams, which begin in May, and I'm using this book to make sure I understand the full English language course. I love how this book covers all of the concept knowledge, from text and their meaning, to characterization, setting and mood, all the way down to structuring an argument. But also all of the exam knowledge needed for paper one and paper two. Currently in class, we're working on question four. Question four is all about evaluating a question and giving your opinion and argument about it. So you have overview, which shows you the format of the question and an example of what it would look like. Strategy, which shows you the steps in which of how to respond to question four. An example, which shows you how you can dissect a question in order to respond to it. I've already looked at the overview of question four. I've gone through the strategies and steps. I've looked at all the examples and now I'm moving on to the sample answers which give examiner comments on ways to gain marks for the question. So in the sample answers it has two examples of answers to question four, one of which was graded quite low and one which was graded a lot more higher. So in example one it received less than half of the marks available and that's because it was really vaguely written and it didn't have any detail in the answer. Whereas example two, as you can see, a lot more is written and it's also really clearly written with detail and it shows deep understanding of language choices and structure. One of my favorite things about this book is that it focuses on knowledge retrieval and practice. The knowledge section is where you read through all of the key information. Retrieval is where you learn to recall all the key information you just learnt. And practice, which is where you use all the key information you just learned in exam style questions. Oxford Revise is one of the most trusted brands when it comes to revision and study support because it is tried and tested. It covers the key information I need to revise and covers the full specification of the English language GCSE. If you have any questions about how Oxford Revise helps me and how it can help you, then leave your questions in the comments. on with the questions what do you want to get in your GCSEs okay I haven't been asked that before it's quite good so with my GCSEs I kind of have like a split in my mind some of them I genuinely just want to pass and the other ones I want to exceed in maths and science them too I'm not even gonna like sugarcoat it I've never been good at them like I don't know if it's just me because I am an academic person but with them too I've just never been able to pick them up and like keep the information in my head and do like well in them. So I really just want to pass them too, I'm hoping. But in like things like art, drama, music as well, them three and English, English definitely, I want to do well in them. Like I'm hoping to get like sevens, but that is a stretch, but I'm going to try my hardest. But with like science and maths, with maths, I do foundation. I really want to get five. I want to get as much as I can. Right now, I've definitely improved in ma maths. I'm just really working towards it. Like passing, I'm really hoping. And science, that one is probably my worst. I'm really bad at it. I'm not even gonna lie like I am bad at it, but I am trying my hardest and I'm just praying I do okay in it But like I feel like we need to kind of talk more about the fact that some people just aren't good at certain subjects I feel like sometimes some teachers can 
make it seem like it's your fault but like for me I've always been better at creative subjects I've never been like best at like core subjects that you need to do and that's okay as long as I like can pass them then I'm not bothered about getting like an A or anything like that I just want to be able to say I passed them what GCSEs do you take I took obviously the core subjects and I did combined science I didn't do separate I took history art drama and music as my four and I don't regret any of them to be honest actually that's kind of a lie if I'm being honest I don't love history History as much as I did I think it's because like there's just so much information when it comes to GCSE and you probably get told this by most people who took it there's just so much that I can't take it in and I can't enjoy the subject because of that but I was still hoping to do well but I don't know I think I still would have picked it because I am interested in the subject but I feel like there's just too much on the to do it's just so much information to take in along with all those other subjects you're learning as well it's just a lot this one's a good one favorite thing about being ginger I'm gonna be honest with this in this generation being ginger is seen as or being a redhead is seen as such a negative especially if you're in like public school environment it's always looked down upon there has been times where i've been like oh it's just like it would be so much easier if i had blonde or brown hair and i think a lot of people who have my hair color can probably relate but then when it comes down to it i go out sometimes and i get complimented by old women it's like the nicest feeling because they, they, it's genuinely like they genuinely love my hair and i think that's my favorite thing because it kind of reminds you that it literally does not matter what those people have ever thought about your hair. <laughs> Honestly, I quite like my hair when it comes down to it. Is it really worth it? But yes, it is. So if you have red hair, don't even let it phase you, honestly. How was year 11 marks? <sighs> I had mine last week and the week before. So the first week coming back from Christmas holidays, I had my marks. That I don't think was a good idea. I did revise over the Christmas holidays, but it then meant that my Christmas holidays were quite stressful because it was the lead up to mocks going back i was like we were just kind of pushed into exams after like not like forgetting kind of how the school environment is after christmas holidays i think they went okay i've got one of my results back for english and in that this is english language which is my bad one i'm better at literature and for english language i got one mark off a of seven so i got a b plus my teacher i do think she under marks so i'm pretty convinced i got a seven yeah that's really good so i was very happy about that that kind of like push my confidence a bit they were okay definitely stressful exams are always stressful it's nice to kind of get used to the exam environment because obviously in like what 50 or something days our school keeps reminding us in like 50 something days we're doing like the proper one so it's good to kind of get used to it how is nugget nugget is good literally not much has changed with her to be honest um she's really good i get her out a lot and yeah she's doing well at the moment what is your biggest fear at the moment i think if someone was to ask me that now then i would say failing my gcse's just because it's like purely the main thing on my mind but in general there is one but why have i forgotten it i never tell people this because i like try and act like i don't have it but i do have kind of a crippling fear of heights like i'm not even gonna over exaggerate i actually do i go up on like a high ledge or whatever and i stand there and i look out and i feel not balanced i feel like i'm gonna fall over i feel like i'm gonna fall off it so i do have like a fear of heights but i'm one of those people like it's not so bad that i won't do something and i feel like i can only push myself into those things because then i'll hopefully overcome it so i've always had like a fear of heights it's probably because i'm quite an anxious person so things like that just like get to me what is your funniest primary school memory thing is i have really bad memory so when people ask this sort of thing these sort of questions i genuinely have no there's probably funnier ones but i can only remember one and this will not be the funniest it was like break time and me and my best friend amelia we like always would get a snack a break you just get one i think it was like a cracker or something i can't even remember but it had like a tomato on it and amelia hates like raw tomatoes which i knew she's like I can't have this, I can't have this. And I was like, why? She was like, I'm allergic to tomatoes. And I was like, since when? Cause like, you're, you're literally holding it. But cause I was kind of stupid. I was a little bit naive and she was holding it. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. She's literally holding it, but it's not even funny. Cause I'm still kind of annoyed. She was holding it and she like threw it in the bin. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get rid of mine if you're like deathly allergic to tomatoes. I loved tomatoes. I threw my tomato in the bin for her. And she goes, only joking, I'm not, I'm not allergic. I was like, that's rude. I wasted a tomato for you. It's still an ongoing tension to this day. Like I bring it up when she talks about tomatoes. I tell people, they laugh. I don't find it funny. What or who inspired you to start a YouTube channel? I was one of the kids who grew up making little videos, which I thought would go nowhere. Like I just film on movie, is it called movie star? Video effects, I'd film on that constantly. I was one of them. It was always in the back of my mind about like doing YouTube ever since I moved to Cornwall, purely because as well as this, my best friend Emma was filming YouTube videos. So like she was there and I was thinking if she can do it I can do it and one day I just went downstairs and I was like dad can I start a YouTube 
channel and he was like yeah it wasn't even like i think everyone would say this start a youtube channel but it wasn't in my mind that it would ever do well like i just thought i'd put myself out there and i was in primary if it was secondary i don't think i would have started it there's a lot of backlash so for anyone who starts it in secondary props to you because i don't think i would have done that very much respect that i started it and i think emma definitely inspired me a lot because she was already started it she was one of my biggest inspirations so i have had to thank for quite a lot of it but also so many YouTubers I used to watch, like Zoella. Who is that I used to watch? I think they're called That YouTube Family. I used to religiously watch them and like I always wanted to be them. So I started it and I did slime and it took off. One of the best decisions of my life. So yeah, I have mainly Emma to thank for that, but also my parents. If they didn't like help me out with it, then it wouldn't have gone anywhere. What is your fave medium to use in art? These questions are really good. I think paint, like I've always loved using acrylic paint. I find it easiest. I tried oils the other day. I'm so un inexperienced. I generally sat there thinking I can do this. I'm good at this. I'm fine i'm gonna be great i was about to go get water but you use like a paint thinner so i was about to like dip in water i just didn't know what i was doing really had to help me and it isn't that good what i did so i think i need to like lower my confidence on that what is your favorite song at the moment i switch songs so much i'm not even gonna lie like one day i like a rap song the best the next day i'm in like emotional billy eilish vibes i think that the only reason this is my favorite is because like i love the the piano in it and i'm learning it because i'm hoping to do it for Oh my gosh, I need to do it for next week. I need to de-stress from that. I'm hoping to do it as one of my pieces to hand in for GCSE. And I listened to it and I was like, I just love the song. I love like the beat to it. I love the piano. And I think that's why it is. It's called Another Love by Tom O'Dell. I love Tom O'Dell. Kind of a random song to be my favourite, but I do really like it. I think it's so good. Have you ever seen a member of the royal family in real life? The closest I've ever got to seeing a member of the royal family. I went to a premiere. It was a Lion King premiere and they came in, but we had to go in before they like arrived because they couldn't have people there. I think it was like security reasons. Reasons. So I saw them coming in on like screen. So they, they played it and it was Prince Harry and Meghan. I was sat in the same room as them because we, we were going to the premiere and they were like up at the back. I was in the front. So that's the closest I've ever got. What A levels are you planning on doing? Okay. I kind of have updates on this to be fair yeah I'm definitely doing A-levels I'm not doing a college course just because I think I want like the qualifications of A-levels and I don't think I'm ready to like pick one course that I want to do because I'm not completely sure on what I do want to do yet like I know what path I want to go on I like need the two years to like kind of I don't know I'm just not ready yet I originally was going to go to the school I'm at currently but I don't think they're running drama because I don't think they have enough people and I saw this other place that one of my friends goes to I went there the people were so nice like the atmosphere of the place was just so good and I'm really interested in doing acting as a career like I've always thought it since I was younger and I'm really passionate about it I went there and they had a whole building for drama and music and from that point I was like I want to go here so I put my application I want to do drama and dance I think and then I could do like English literature it's not for sure but I'm definitely doing like the drama maybe the dance and maybe the English literature but I'm so excited because they do so many productions it just looks so good so I'm really excited for next year where was your favorite holiday Italy. Last year I went to Italy. We went to Florence, but on the way, because we went on the Eurostar, we went like through Paris, through Stra Strasbourg, is that how you say it? Strasbourg. We went through like the Alps. It was so cool. That was the best holiday like ever. I loved it in Italy, Florence. I don't even know if it's because I'm obsessed with pasta and Italian food, but in general, it was just the prettiest, most peaceful place ever to be. The atmosphere of it was just so nice. I just love Italy. Are you excited for summer? I am so excited. This is like what everyone calls like the best summer because obviously we finish in June instead of July because of GCSEs. So we have a long summer and I honestly want it to be so good. Like after GCSEs, I feel like you just need like deserve a break. And I honestly, what do you want to do when you are done with school? Acting, I'm hoping. Ever since I was younger, I've always been quite like dramatic. My family always said. So I know it's quite hard to get into the industry, but I'm, I'm praying that it works out because I really, really am interested in it. Do you believe in second chances? I don't know what this is in reference to. Personally, I do. You could have a different opinion, but I think that people can generally change. That's the only way I can say it. Like I'm quite a forgiving person. Like if I, if I see a difference in someone, then I will act on it. I think people do deserve ch second chances, but also like there are areas of things that people can do that you won't forget so yeah second chances i think can happen but also like honestly depends on the scenario i hope that's in reference to something else i was just giving advice for absolutely no reason do you watch traitors me and my family are watching it we are obsessed we watched it last year as well i want harry to win so bad if you guys watch it he's like such a good traitor because he gives off completely innocent vibes we're actually behind because we started it like after a couple of episodes already started so we're quite behind diane just left sorry if you're watching it and i just gave that away how are you dealing with exam stress i think people try and like give reasons to not be stressed and 
try and be like, don't stress about it. It's your GCSEs, you don't need to stress. The thing about it is I think you're always going to be stressed about GCSEs and exams. There isn't like a way, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be told not to stress about it purely because like, it's not gonna work. It's never gonna work. I'm stressed all the time about it, but it's just about balancing because if you're constantly revising and constantly having that on your mind, then you're bound to just feel worse about it. So balancing, seeing friends, doing other things, not constantly having your head down because that can just be really overwhelming and make everything worse. And the more the stre you stress, probably for some people they don't work well under pressure. Like me, I don't, I don't think. I think balancing it de-stresses you a bit and getting good sleep because if you're up all night and you wake up and you're just shattered all the time then any revision you do is pretty worthless because it's not going to stay in your, your mind does it really how often are you revising at the moment i revise every day but i'd say i do like two hours of revision a day sometimes more because then i do do like some maths before i go to bed and like english quotes type thing it'll probably increase but i think it's more important now about getting into the like schedule of it and the flow of it because if i just throw myself into like four hours a day i'm not going to do it because it will just overwhelm me so just slowly like gradually increasing it i think is the best way to do it um so i do like two subjects a day and the thing is like people say like with revision it's like consuming but the thing is even if you did four hours you could always like wake up nine nine ten eleven twelve by twelve o'clock have it done and i know that's four straight hours but there are ways around having it consuming you which i'm trying to learn now because sometimes i like annoy myself by saying that i'm taking over my days with it but if I really sat down and did two hours, it's not that much. I don't do too much at the moment, but I have just finished my mocks where I was doing a lot a day. So I'm trying to like breathe a little bit. <laughs> did you watch Love Island slash Traitors? Obviously I have watched Traitors as I just said, but Love Island I haven't watched this yet. I'm not gonna lie, like this might be unpopular opinion. I liked the year where Chloe Burrows and like Liberty Paul and all of them were in it and then the year before, then the year after. But I haven't been keeping up with it. I'm not that interested in Love Island anymore. I don't know why. It doesn't like attract me anymore, you know what I mean? Not that I don't think it's good. I think it's like entertaining, but I think I'm more interested in other series. And I don't really want to commit to every day watching it this summer. Have you seen the new Mean Girls film? I've seen a lot of like trailers and advertisement of it, but I haven't actually seen it. And I don't know if I want to watch it because I don't know if any can actually beat the original. And I'm thinking I'm not going to watch it and think, hmm. Oh. So if you've watched it, let me know, DM me, tell me if you think it was good because I like might go see it just because I love going to the cinema and it's an upbeat sort of thing, you know what I mean? This is the last one. If you could play any instrument, what would you play apart from piano? I think guitar just because it's so like widespread and like it's in so many songs. I just would love to play guitar, it's so cool and I love acoustic guitar, the way it sounds in songs, I think it's so pretty sounding. But also like drums would be so cool because like imagine just like that'd be well cool. So I think them too. Those are all the questions I'm answering for today. I hope I've kind of updated you on my life a bit. I know most of these were kind of school orientated just because obviously like school is kind of the main thing in my life at the moment, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, definitely some updates on like A-level type things and things like that. For anyone who are doing like mocks at the moment or in GCSE year, I hope you guys are doing okay. Try not to stress yourself out too much and I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content and I will see you all in my next video. Bye! Enchanté.